Hi, this is Sean D'Souza, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation Podcast. This podcast isn't some magic trick about how to work less. Instead, it's about how to really enjoy the work that you do and to enjoy your vacation time. Hi, I'm Sean, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation. When I was growing up, we always had a lot of green bananas around the house. Now there's a problem with bananas, and that is that they're all green at one point in time, and then, like some magic trick, they all start to get darker, and then they all become black. And unless you're a banana-eating family that times it exactly right, it's either too hard, too difficult to eat, or it's just too soft and sweet and gooey. And once they got black, they also got very sweet and soggy and no one wanted to touch them. And there is this phrase, when you have lemons, you make lemonade. And in Goa, India, they make a little sweet called philos, which is F-I-L-O-S. And that was our version of lemonade being made from lemons. We made philos from bananas. And today we're going to talk about philos moments. We're going to talk about how at Psychotactics we've run into a reasonable amount of failure. And it's very difficult to say, okay, this is one type of failure. So we're going to put it in the three boxes as we always do. We'll look at failure through different lenses. Let's look at the three types of failure that we're going to talk about. And this is story time, so you're going to enjoy yourself. The first kind of failure would be projects that should have been abandoned. The second just comprises of moments of despair. And finally, the third type of failure is one where we got pushed into the corner. Let's start out with the first one, which is projects that should have been abandoned. We started 5000 BC in the year 2003. So I had written the book, The Brain Audit, and people started asking whether we could have a place to discuss The Brain Audit. And blogs had just started at that point in time, so we kind of took this blog behind a screen, behind a paywall, and it was not much of a paywall. 5000 BC cost just $7 a year. Yes, that's the whole year. And you had a forum, and you had articles, and you had a blog, and all of that stuff for $7 a year. Almost instantly, about 100 people signed up for 5000 BC for the membership. And then the year passed, and there wasn't an automatic renewal. This was something where we would reach December, and then we'd just change the password for the next year. So if you joined in November or December, then you just got one month of membership. But if you joined at the start of the year, you get the whole year's membership. It wasn't perfect, but that was the system. Anyway, so the first year passes and we decide we're going to increase prices. And we increase the prices from $7 to $11. Now that kind of seems like a 50% increase, but you know how it is. 7 and $11 aren't that much of a jump. At this point, more than 50% of the audience disappears. They don't renew. What are you supposed to do? It's like sitting in a room and you're speaking to an audience and then 50% of them stand up and leave the room. You just think that there's something wrong with you. There's something wrong with your project. You think that, you can't think actually, can you? You just wonder if you made a right decision. You wonder if everything was wrong in the first place. Logically, this project should have been abandoned way back in 2004. But here we are in 2019, and 5000 BC is still vibrant. It's still a place where people are kind and helpful. And 
that's one of the things that we have learned that when we have these difficult moments, we have to look at it and give it some breathing space because not every idea starts out being amazing or brilliant straight off the blocks, which is what we've come to assume when we look at everything on the internet is that everything should work the first time around. Every sale should work. Everything should just go like clockwork. That's not been our experience. In fact, 5000 BC has gone through a lot of upheaval over the years. There was a point when it was going crazy, as in 150 to 200 posts a day. And that's a problem in itself because when people join 5000 BC, they expect me to respond to their questions, which is what we promise. And 200 posts a day, that's a lot of questions to deal with. And then there were times when there would be nothing and Renuka and I would be going for a walk and I would talk to her and say, no one's posted on 5000 BC. The forum is extremely quiet. And then the next day, forum extremely quiet. The third day, same thing. There's this whole cricket sequence that goes on and I'm desperately writing articles, trying to push people, trying to pull people, trying to get this activity going. We've not had much of a problem for quite a while now in 5000 BC, but that was one of the projects that you could have said, okay, we should abandon this. The second story that I would like to tell you in this story of abandonment is the copywriting course. We now call it the sales page course or the sales letter course, whatever you want to call it. But at that point in time, it was called the copywriting course. And it's the year 2010, which means that we've been online for close to 10 years. We've sold lots of copies of the Brain Audit. We've sold other products. We've done multiple workshops in the US, in Australia, in New Zealand. And and at this point, it's a no-brainer to host the copywriting course online, especially because in 2006 and 2007 and 2008, we had the Protege courses and they were year long and we had copywriting courses and they went fine. But then came 2010. After being 10 years in the business and having lots of clients and lots of experience and everything technically going our way, we announced the course and just four seats fill up. Should we abandon the project? That's the question that you have to ask yourself. Is it about the contents? Is it about the pricing? These are questions that are almost impossible to answer. And the only way you can answer this question is to have another course. So we did. We had another course in a few years. And to this day, it's the fastest selling course that we've ever had in Psychotactics. We had 25 seats at over $2,000 and all of them were gone in 20 minutes. This first part is about bananas again. It's about unripe bananas. It's bananas that we try to open and eat too quickly. And of course, it didn't work, but then we waited for a while and we could eat the bananas. So that's the end of the first section, which is when we looked at projects that should have been abandoned. But it gets worse. There is a moment of pure despair. And if it were just a moment, it would be fine. But it lasted almost all year and it affected not one or two, but three of our websites. In 2015, we were running our websites on a software called Joomla. And Joomla is a very robust content management system. It's a bit like WordPress. And we'd been running it for several years on three of our websites. So the main website is psychotactics.com, and then we have 5000bc.com, and then we have another site at training.brainaudit.com, and that's where we do all our courses. Joomla was the content management system that we'd been using for all of these three websites. 
But as a small business, it's hard to keep track of all the updates and all the things that you have to do with your website. And admittedly, we got slack. We didn't make all the updates that Joomla pushed our way. That's when we had our first hacker. Psychotactics went down and I didn't know where to look. So I went to Facebook and I asked people if they had someone to recommend. And there was this guy, Nathan, and Nathan came in and he fixed the website and they were gone. The website was up again. A few weeks later, they're back again. Website is down. Nathan comes in, fixes it. And every time you're paying Nathan, which is fair enough and really worth the money, but you don't know when you're going to be hacked. And suddenly you have courses going or you're out in a workshop or doing all the stuff that you have to do in a business and now your website's not functioning. People can't buy off your website. People can't do stuff and you're probably losing subscribers. All of this is happening simultaneously. And while we're dealing with psychotactics.com, someone goes and hacks 5000bc.com and suddenly there are all of these images in the image folder. We don't know where it came from. Obviously, there is this loophole, this little backend thing that was left open. And then it goes to the training site. And now we have three of these disasters unfolding at the same time. At first, we're just removing folders, we're locking folders, we're blocking whole countries from accessing the website and then eventually you have to go through the trauma I call it trauma because you have to shift the entire thing across to WordPress for every moment that we've had these extreme problems we've also had enormous help clients have come to our rescue they've recommended stuff they've helped out Bob Jaynes, for instance, is a 5000 BC member. And from the very start, he pitched in, he helped us set up forums, he cleaned up stuff, he did things for us that clients don't usually do for you. Other clients made solid recommendations, and as a result, we were able to get our websites up and running. And then eventually we had stresslessweb.com come in, clean up everything and they've been handling our websites ever since and we've never had a problem but this has been a moment of complete despair and yet when we fixed the websites and we got them onto wordpress we realized something we had a problem in place our subscribers had been kind of trickling in but it was slow and we just thought, okay, the internet's become more busy. We haven't been doing a lot of promotion. And then we just switched over our websites and it took off. It just took off. At that point we realized, oh wait, our websites had been throttling the subscribers. Somehow it had been so bad that Google hadn't been referring clients to us because of our crappy code, because of all the things that we hadn't done. So it was a real blessing in disguise, this hacking thing that went on for a year. Because if it had gone for just a few months, we would have fixed it and then moved along. But it went on and on and on and we had no choice. And something similar happened to 5000 BC right at the very start. We were at Fox Glacier, and you probably heard the story because I have told it before, but we were at Fox Glacier, and this is in the South Island of New Zealand. Now we don't check email while we're away, but back then there was no support, so we would check email. I remember these were the days before all of this Wi-Fi and devices and connections, and you had to go specifically into a room, get to a computer, log in, pay for it. And that's the kind of thing that we did. So there was this one little place where we could check our email very slow, but that was the only place. And we checked it and someone said that 5000 BC 
was non-existent. It was coming up blank. And when we checked with the people who were hosting our website, at that point in time, 5000 BC was being hosted on another website, on another membership kind of system. When we got in touch with them, they said some error had been made and our entire website had been deleted. I knew very little about the technology that went on a hosted kind of system. And I asked about backups and they said, well, we have backups, but somebody made a backup of the deleted system, which didn't make any sense. But that was our situation. We had no membership site anymore. Bear in mind that clients had already paid for their membership for the whole year and now they have no site to go to. What happens next? One of our clients starts up a waiting room. He created a forum and people went to that waiting room and they had their discussions and they told me, you have your vacation, you come back and we'll see how it goes. But it was a nightmare. For a month after that, I was up at 2 a.m. every day. Not because I had anything to do at 2 a.m., but because I couldn't sleep. All of the things that needed to be done to set up a new website, repopulate the content. And luckily, we had a backup. We had been working towards creating a new 5000 BC, and so we had a backup, and therefore, things were okay. And these were moments of complete despair. These are moments where you think, Everything is going wrong. Maybe we should just quit. We are just human beings and the gods are against us. This is what I'd call the philos moment where the banana is just too overripe. It's black, it's gooey, it's sweet. And then something wonderful happens and you make philos out of it. And you can't tell that the philos is gonna turn out great, but that's what you have to do. And this takes us to the third part where we have these what do I do now moments. You've probably heard of Santa's elves, haven't you? Well, we have elves too. And they're in 5000 BC. And they work every time we go on vacation. And this story, also a repeat by the way, is about the first time that we went away on vacation. And not only was I checking email at that point in time, but I'd also go into 5000bc.com and I'd start to answer questions. At which point in time, I remember one of the clients telling me specifically, this is what we are trying to achieve. We are trying to achieve a vacation time and we want you to be the role model. We don't want you to check email and to get into the membership site when you're away because what's the point? And he was right. We couldn't check email. We couldn't get into 5000 BC. And so we're stuck in this in-between zone. Now, it's one thing to stay away from the membership site. But what we had to do is we also had to put in a little system. And my wife, Renuka, came up with the system and she said, the members have always been very helpful and let's see if they will help out when we're away. And so that's what we did. We asked them whether they would help out, whether they would be elves and help out. And they did. And they do to this day. So even as we go on holiday, on vacation, that's exactly what happens. We ask for volunteers. And we not only get clients who have been around for ages and some of them have been around for 10, 15 years. But we also get clients who have just joined because the whole mantra of the cave is be kind, be helpful. And most people in 5000 BC have done several courses, read several of our books. And so you're not just getting random people giving you random advice, but specific advice based on a system that's in place. That has helped us in a way that we would not have expected. People often ask us, how do you go away and just leave the membership site alone? This is how. 
you create a level of helpfulness and then that level of helpfulness perpetuates. So you are helping your clients when you're around and then when you're not around, they're helping out. Of course, they're helping out when you're around as well. But this whole factor of being kind and helpful, that needs to be the core. And that was our first or one of the early what do we do now moments which you could say is failure or at least a bit jittery. Let's talk about a second one, a second story, which is more recent. The three-month vacation podcast has been running since 2014. And it's been quite a strain for several years. And then it got easier. But it's still week after week, you have to put out another podcast, which is 4,000 words or 5,000 words. And again, it's like, what do I do now? Because every time we're going on vacation, should we have reruns? What should we do? How do we get ahead? Because otherwise we were always touch and go. Everything was just on the deadline. And that puts a lot of pressure on you, as I mentioned in a previous episode about deadlines. What are you supposed to do? Again, you're pushed into that corner. It's frustrating, but there doesn't seem to be a solution. And I was watching comedy. I watch a lot of comedy all day long while I'm working, well, in between work. And I noticed that Comedy Central had these in-betweens. They were extremely short and they were unscripted. And I thought, why not do this? So that's what I did. I called them in-betweens and I started doing some of the episodes and I did maybe two and I stopped. Part of the reason why I stopped was because there was such good content and if I just spoke on the microphone, well, that was just going to be a transcript and transcripts tend to be, you know, like transcripts, like conversation. It seemed like I had the solution with that in between that short unscripted podcast, but for months I just went about doing what I'd already done, and that is to write that long, detailed podcast week after week. And my sister in law, Audrey, she mentioned it to me. My wife, Renuka, brought it up several times. Why don't you do that? Why are you doing this week after week? What was really frustrating to me as well was that I knew that they were right, but also that I was watching Comedy Central and I enjoyed those in-betweens. I enjoyed those unscripted short little snippets. And then in October of 2018, a perfect storm hit us in terms of creating podcasts because we were going away to Mexico and then we would come back, and then after that, it was a Christmas break. So there was all of this stuff that needed to be done, all of these podcasts that needed to be queued, and there was no way I was going to have enough reruns for them or not put in so many reruns, and I needed to create new content. That was it. Came up with a short podcast. I invented it. Well, it sure felt like that. And so we started running short and long podcasts, mixing them up quite a bit. And now when you're listening to the podcast, what happens is you get the same feeling that I get when I'm watching Comedy Central. I like the long version. I also like the short version. And clients have responded really well to it because now they can keep up with it. Sometimes you feel, oh, I'm falling so much behind. But with the long and short, you catch up and then you're on top of things and that feels good. And Renuka looks at the short podcast and she says, thank goodness you finally listened to me. And that brings us to the end of this episode. We looked at projects that should have been abandoned. We looked at moments of despair. And we looked at what do I do moments. And these are what you would call lemon into lemonade or ripe bananas into philos. Some people would call them stories of failure, but I think that it has made us much better, much stronger, and it's been more interesting for us as we've gone along our journey.
There is no one thing that you can do here. There is no telling that you persist and things will work out. But there are lessons that you learn along the way. And those lessons really help. And that's what I would say is the one thing that you should take from this. Persist, learn the lessons, and what do you know? Maybe you'll get a great results. You'll get feel us. And that brings us to the end of this podcast. Let's find out what's happening in psychotactics today. Two big bookings opening up in June, and that is the cartooning course, which is on the 22nd of June, and the headline course, which is on the 29th of June. I've known clients who have done two courses simultaneously, but I would say pick one of these. Learn how to draw cartoons. It is so much fun to be able to draw your own cartoons. So that's on the 22nd of June. You have to go to psychotactics.com slash da Vinci, D A. V-I-N-C-I. And then the headline course, and that's at psychotactics.com slash HL, as in headlines. And you'll get goodies, but more importantly, you'll get on the waiting list. And that enables you to get the notification because we have very limited seats. We have only 30 seats for the cartooning course and just 25 for the headline course. We're very strict with this. This is not something that's extendable or you're not going to get this hype that you find quite a lot on the internet. And the difference between a psychotactics course and a lot of courses out there is that the other people, they offer you a money back guarantee, but they never guarantee a result. And we don't give you a money back guarantee but we guarantee the result. You don't just get classes on cartooning, you become a cartoonist. You don't just get information about headlines, you are able to write eight different types of headlines in under 10 minutes. And know that every single one of them is curious, every single one of them will get your client to go, I have to read this. That's the power of results. I know it's a word that gets thrown around a lot, But this is a specific skill. When you finish, it's there. Which is why the courses fill up so quickly, because 5000 BC members get first preference, and they are usually clients who have done courses with us before. So they know how good the courses are and how precise they are with the results. If you would like to join us at 5000 BC, well, you know how it is. It's a place where you have to be kind, you have to be helpful, And I think you will enjoy yourself. It has lots of information for your small business, but also you can ask me a lot of questions when I'm around and I'm around nine months in a year. That's me from Psychotactics Land. I'll say bye for now. Bye-bye. Still listening? And do you have overripe bananas at home? Well, go and look up the Philos recipe. That's F-I-L-O-S. I'm sure you'll like it too. Bye-bye.